Hey there, Spartan fans. Welcome inside the women's locker room at San Jose State for women's basketball. We're joined by the head coach, Jamie Craighead. Schedule is out, uh, but before we talk about the schedule, uh, how's the offseason gone for you? Uh, it's really it's really going great. Um, we have six new kids. We have all of our you know kids back on campus with us. Um, we've been out recruiting, so mm -hmm. they're doing a lot with the strength coach in the weight room, and our ops is making sure that she keeps her eye on them. Right, right. Well, when we look at the schedule now, uh, I think two things jump out. Uh, first and foremost, a lot of home games for this uh, basketball finally. team. Yeah, yeah, finally. finally. So, so, so let's talk about that. And I know that uh, in the past couple of years when you've been the head coach, only once there were six non-conference home games. Is that a goal for you to get more and more home games moving forward? Yeah, just more balance to the schedule. I think it was... It was a pretty tough preseason last mm -hmm. year, and I think as a coach, you always have to adjust and, and figure out what's best for your team. And um, with losing four veteran players, I think uh, with the group that we have come back, 11 underclassmen, it was right. imperative that we gave them more home opportunities against teams that um, I think, you know, are winnable games mm -hmm. and um, they have to be prepared, but we're excited. And we're just hoping that maybe now the balance can continue. Now that we've balanced it out, we know we're gonna have to play guarantee games on the road, sure. but we can we can do a better job of keeping the balance. Maybe the other thing that jumps out to fans are, are two of the non-conference games against UCLA and Oregon State. Now, those are the farthest you're gonna have to travel in the non-conference, which is great in itself, but two very challenging games. Yeah, it is. I mean, we travel enough during our conference season, right, every week. So um, we open at UCLA, which is nice because we have some kids from that greater LA area. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure that they grew up watching UCLA and we'll get a lot of fans down there, but a very, very talented UCLA team that's made a pretty deep run in the tournament. It'll be a great opportunity for our players to see what an NCAA tournament right. team is going to look like really early and, and challenge ourselves in that first game of the season. On the other side of it, too, is some of these return games bring a, a team like Nebraska inside the event center, and that's going to be fun for our fans to watch. Was that the plan, to get these return games, get these opponents that are, that are pretty good opponents inside the event center? Yeah, we set that up with... Um, you know, a guarantee game and then a return to us. I think they like to use that for a recruiting opportunity mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. them and then another return back to them next year and thought it would be a great game to market um, and get people excited. Everybody knows who Nebraska right, is, right. whether it's about Nebraska women's basketball or how great their football program is. Um, I think it'll be an easy game to get people excited about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then you go into the conference schedule and, and obviously things can change, but what are, you, what are you looking at from the conference this year on the women's side? Uh, strengths, weaknesses, uh, what are you looking at from some of these teams? You know, I think it's it's happened again that people lost a lot of talented mm -hmm. players. Um, obviously, Colorado State had the reigning player of the year for, you know, two years. And um, I, I think that that particular class of kids really helped them. And um, I'm sure he'll find a way to right. reload. But it's nice to know that we won't have to see Nystrom anymore. Um, Boise State lost some talented players. Uh, I just think it's kind of wide open in, in how I look at it. Mm -hmm. Fresno State lost their shot blocker who transferred to Duke. So um, I, I tell our team, you know, we might be young and a little bit inexperienced, but um, we're going to make up for it uh, on the defensive end and pressuring the whole game and kind of getting back to maybe more of a true style, up and down, fast break, and then press, trap, and throw multiple defenses at you. So I'm really excited about what we have and, and our chances. All right, well, you can check out the schedule at SGSUSpartans.com. All the news there as well with the women's basketball team. Coach, uh, what, what's next now? Uh, before we get going uh, in October, uh, what, what's this next couple months look like? Um, they're going to get a little break here right before school starts, and then we, we're back in that eight-hour week, so we'll get them two hours a week on the court, and then they get to come back and mm -hmm. train. And, and really, our biggest goal in this offseason is to make sure they're in shape and ready for practice to start October 1st. You know, we get our 20 hours a week. We'll be out there every day. Um, I'm really excited for that time because that's when you see the most improvement. It's consistent that mm -hmm, we're on the court. Mm -hmm. um, but my hope is that every single player, including all the freshmen who came in and maybe were ready, weren't ready, weren't quite ready to yeah. know what it, you know they expected, they would be in shape by October 1st and be ready to go. All right, that's women's basketball head coach Jamie Craighead. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Follow her and San Jose State women's basketball at SJSUSpartans.com.